3, 2, unité, top. À l'image, on t'avait le Next week, an Ariane 5 rocket will scream skyward from the coast of French Guyana. On board, an exceedingly delicate $10 billion instrument that is only half-jokingly referred to as a time machine. For the last two decades, a slew of experts at NASA, Northrop Grumman, and beyond have been modeling, building, folding, testing, shaking, and refining the innumerable components that make up this precision tool. Coming back down. Before its launch, Vice News was given an up-close look. So tell me, how long have you been working on this? So, uh, well, there's two answers. Uh, full-time, about 18 years. Wow, okay. And it's pretty much been about half, over half of my career. This specific telescope? This exact project, yep. So this is our... I did not expect it to be this big. What is that? Can you explain oh. <laughs> like, to a person who doesn't know what it is, like, what is it? What you're looking at is the James Webb Space Telescope, NASA's largest space mission for astronomy that it's ever flown. And we are on the cusp of taking it down to the launch site and launching it this year. James Webb Space Telescope is a six and a half meter primary mirror telescope which is the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. The Webb will be orders of magnitude more powerful than its older sibling Hubble. But first, it has a long journey ahead of it. After it exits Earth's atmosphere, it'll fly past the moon and at a million miles away, park itself at what is called L2, one of five points that are gravitationally stable between the sun and the Earth. Once there, it springs into action. And once it gets on orbit, it pretty much has to transform itself. It's almost like a transformer. It's gonna robotically unfurl itself. We're gonna command it from the ground. We're gonna say, hey, do this. Uh, but it pretty much has to get itself in its configuration to actually do science. One of the most critical parts of that transformation is the unfurling of the telescope's tennis court-sized sunshield to keep the telescope very, very cold. As a cryogenic telescope, it has to be very, very cold. So almost everything you're looking at in there, the gold mirrors, the instruments, uh, they will all run almost at 30 Kelvin. You're talking about minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason it has to stay so cold is because this telescope sees everything in infrared, which means any heat could throw off its reading as it looks deep into the origins of the universe. Uh, because it's an infrared telescope, that's one of the reasons we have to be cold, is to be able to see that first light from those first stars, because uh, it's, it's just been stretched. The wavelengths have been expanded into the uh, infrared now, so we would never see it with something like Hubble anyway. Uh, even if Hubble were, were larger, it, it's just not cold enough to see it. Dr. Begonia Vila is a systems engineer that's been working on the Webb Telescope for the last 15 years. What does it mean that this telescope can see back in time? If you look when the universe was first formed, we have that big bang. And we have a period that was very hot, and then when it cooled down enough, the first objects, the first planets, the stars, galaxies, started to form, and they emitted light. And that light has been traveling for 13.5 billion years across the space. The universe is expanding. So that means that light goes to longer and longer wavelengths. So if you want to detect that light that's there, uh, you have to take a picture at that wavelength. That's what James Webb is going to be able to do. Uh, you look on the infrared and the light that you picked up is from those very first objects. So that's when we say we can look back in time, we are able to see that light for the first formation. That's because the light from billions of years ago has stretched into longer and longer wavelengths as the universe expanded. The web is specifically designed to see these early remnants of the cosmos better than any telescope before. What are you most excited about seeing? We know the galaxy where we live, we know how it looks like. We already know the first galaxies were not like that. We know the first stars that were forming the universe were huge stars that exploded and generated the material that made us. But James Webb is also looking at our search for are we alone in the universe, right? We know now that there are planets around other stars 
a few years ago, we didn't know that, now we know. But now we want to advance that a little bit, see the atmosphere of those planets and see if they have what we think is needed for life, water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. Once the web completes the month-long journey to its new home in space, it'll take five months for it to start capturing images of the universe's farthest reaches. For scientists lining up to get their turn with the new telescope, anticipation is running high. I feel uh, we are looking at the universe with eyes that we haven't used before. So I think we are going to see things that we are not expecting. Why does that matter to the regular person living on Earth who's not thinking about what's out there? Why does it matter, these discoveries that this telescope can potentially make? I always think we humans are explorers. We want to understand where we are. We want to understand how we got here. And I think it is very important to continue answering our curiosity. That's how we have evolved uh, throughout. So I think James Webb, uh, our knowledge of the universe is it's good to continue doing that um, and learn what we can. Before coming here, I perused the internet to see what people really wanted to know about this telescope. And the number one question is, will this telescope allow us potentially to see if there's other forms of life out there? I think uh, looking for other forms of life, we want to do it. I think James Webb gives us a little bit more information, right? First, we didn't know if there were other planets. Now we know there are. Maybe the first planets that were discovered because of the way we discover them, which is the planet goes in front of the star, the light dims a little bit, so we know there is a planet. The first ones were bigger planets, so a Jupiter, a Saturn, and we said, oh great, there is a planet, but I don't think there is life in those. Now we have planets in what we think is the, the good zone, uh, and now we want to see what is their atmosphere made of. So we know what we have on the Earth. So I think it, it advances our search, you know, we, we are going in the right direction. <laughs>